Good morning. Good to see you all out there this morning. This lovely July day. It's not even really hot. How about that? Uh, welcome to New Brunswick Church of Christ. We're glad you're all here. Any visitors we've got today other than we're glad to welcome the Burks back with us. Good to see them. Anyone else? Well, we are glad you're all here. Uh, several things to mention, so we'll try to keep moving. Um, Sam. Okay. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Sam. Sorry, anyone else? We'll say we'll uh, keep moving. Jean's not here, is she? I don't see Jean Hitch, do I? Good to have you. Thanks. Appreciate that. Anybody else? I keep moving on and we keep getting more people, so that's good. We are glad you're here. Um, as I was mentioning, there's a, a card back there for Jean. We we're going to make her uh, close her eyes and plug her ears, but since she's not here, we can go ahead and say it. So be sure and sign that on the way back for her 90th birthday. So if you haven't done that, be sure and do so. Today is anniversary Sunday, and that's going to happen a little bit later, but um, we, we will get to that. I was just curious, though, if you notice in the bulletin, 50 years is gold, 55 is emerald, 60 is diamond, 65 is sapphire, 70 is platinum. What about 75 and 80? Ginny, do you know? Okay. They did, I just wondered. I, I was afraid they thought no one was ever going to get there. I mean, we've got some in there that actually are there now. So just kidding. It's always good to put Jenny on the spot, you know. Um, uh, Sharon sure mentioned there is no leadership meeting this evening for the, for the elders, deacons, and trustees since Dwight's out and everything. And my understanding is that there won't, it won't be rescheduled, so the next leadership meeting won't be till August. Just so you know that, that there is no uh, elders or leadership meeting this evening. Let's see, anything else I should remember, huh? Well, we'll let uh, Jenny go now. It is your favorite high school teacher who has eight days left, not counting the weekends. And I really am excited to start school. But next Sunday is our last Sunday that we will be, um, ex will be getting, um, yeah, sorry, the supplies, because we're going to bag them up and get them sent out. Okay, thank you. It's a good thing teachers don't have to communicate very well, you know. I'm culinary. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't talk. She just cooks or whatever that is, right? Bakes and all those other things. That's good. <laughs> um, I believe that's everything. We need to mention announcement-wise unless someone else has something we need to share. If not, we would move on to uh, prayer time. Um, my understanding is from the update that Rusty gave us in Sunday school, Dwight's doing well there at home. Obviously, they're not here today. They're just kind of taking it easy for a couple of days. All their family departed, so they're having a little quiet time. Um, but he is doing doing well, and every he has every intention of being back to preach next Sunday. So keep on praying for him. You know, whatever you do, text, call, send cards, all those kind of things. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Um, any other updates or prayer concerns we want to bring up other than our prayer list, which you'd always pay attention to. If not, uh, we're glad you're here this morning, and let's begin with prayer. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you for our many blessings. Thank you for the opportunities that we have to serve, Lord. Help us to be open to those and aware. We thank you for all the activities that are going on, for uh, the anniversaries to be celebrated today, Lord. We know how important that is uh, in this world today to be able to make a commitment and follow through and bless all these wonderful people that have reached those milestones. Help us all to continue to aspire to that. We thank you for this church and all the activities and things that are out there. Lord, help us to all be involved and do our part to support this church and this community and to lift your name up. 
bless our service this morning as we sing and as we commune and as uh, Jim shares your word, that we would be open to that and that we would be ready to go out and share the good news with those around us. Once again, we thank you for your son Jesus and our many, many blessings. All these things we pray in your name. Amen. Good morning. We're so happy you've joined us today. This morning, Jim will be sharing on marriage from the book of John. And we'll honor those who have celebrated 50 years or more together. God calls us to live our lives for him and to love one another. Please stand as we sing.
please be seated. We would like to thank God and our, um, the Academy for these lovely awards. No, come on down. Um, we're going to celebrate anniversaries today. So um, we have Linda and Dan Turpin. In how many years? Fifty-nine. Dave and Di Mahoy. I feel like a spokesperson for a talk show. Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Awesome. Um. Don and Iris. Don and I were actually married, we like two months being 72 years. We'll call it 72. <laughs> Patsy and Ira? We got to be together for 57 years. Oh, 57. <laughs> Woody and Alice. How many? 70. 70 years. Art and Theta? Do you know how many? 72. 72 years. Okay. Um, Gordon and Linda Davis. How many years? 63. 63 and counting, right? Um, David and Connie. Fifty five. And my favorite, Don and Phyllis Merritt. Fifty five and counting. And Ruth Pickering and Bob? 71. 71 years. <laughs> Dave and Terry Daniel. 51. 51. <laughs> Buck and Nancy's not here, but they were married, or they've been married for 57 years. Um, David and Inga Randall, they've been married for 62. Jim and Marilyn Hicks, oh, sorry. Yes, clap. Um, Jim and Marilyn Hicks for 53 years. Um, Joed and Pat Clark, um, and they were married 68 years. And Carolyn Highsong? <laughs> How many? 53. 53 years. I think that's it. Yeah, you can read that. Thank you so much. You all are an inspiration.
shall leave his mother and a woman leave her home. They shall travel on to where the two should be as one, as it was in the beginning, is now until the end. Woman draws her life from man. example of love these couples display to each of us. The Bible compares the love between a husband and wife to Christ's love for the church. Ephesians 5, 25 and 27 through 27 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless.
For this morning's communion meditation, I would like to read some passages and draw some parallels between Passover and the Lord's Supper. Passover is an annual, week-long Jewish celebration that originated when the Israelites were liberated from Egypt. We read about this in Exodus chapter 12, starting with verse 21. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Verse 24. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. As Christians, we come around this communion table each week to remember Christ, our Passover lamb. Christ himself instituted what we call the Lord's Supper on the night before his torturous death on the cross. Matthew 26, 26 through 28 records this as Jesus and his disciples were eating the Passover meal. Verse 26, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. God spared the Israelites' physical lives when he saw the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. God spares our souls for eternity with him when he sees the blood of Jesus that covers us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for not sparing your own son in order to redeem us. Please help us to never take for granted the sacrifice that Jesus willingly gave of himself on the cross. Thank you for not leaving him in the grave and for the victory over death that we share with Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
requirement uh, that he has placed on our lives to love one another. And I'd like to uh, uh, just read a, a few selected verses from John chapter 13 and also John chapter 15, where uh, Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you also must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And then over in John 15, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my disciples if you do what I command. This is my command, love each other. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we would ask you to help us prepare our hearts to receive your word as we consider your book today. Father, we hear the priority of your son Jesus that we would love each other the way he has loved us. And so we ask, Lord, that you would increase our love that you would give us greater understanding in what it means to love and that you would give us your strength that we might love in the way that you would call us to love. Father, there's not a single one of us that can't grow in this area of our lives. And so we pray, Lord, that you would give us all that we need to increase in loving like Jesus loved. Father, I ask that you would be with me, me as I speak, that Christ and his name would be honored as we consider your word, and we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. As uh, Valentine's Day was approaching, an elementary school teacher uh, assigned her class to write a short paragraph on what they knew about uh, this topic of love. Seven-year-old Kenny wrote, Love, it gives me a headache to think about that stuff. I'm just a kid. I don't need that kind of trouble. Lynette wrote, It's better for girls to be single, but not for boys. Boys need somebody to clean up after them. Can, can I get an amen, ladies? <laughs> Little Riley wrote, lovers will be staring at each other and their food will get cold. Other people care more about food. Little Bart advised, and I think this is good advice, don't forget your wife's name. That will mess up the love. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would say so. And then Little, Mo, May, <clears throat> Little May wrote, no one is sure why it happens, but I heard it has something to do with how you smell. That's why perfume and deodorant are so popular. <laughs> so some of you must smell pretty good because you've made it 60 years and beyond. Um, if, if we were to be honest, even as adults, it's hard to, to put into words this topic of love. Hard to uh, defi define it or nail uh, down uh, what all that uh, love means, and uh, I'll be the first to say that in one sermon, it's pretty much impossible to, to cover all the implications and meanings of, of this issue of love. But in our text today, we are reminded that we're commanded to love others the way Jesus loves us. I'm going to kind of use... Uh, a definition, it's, it's really an insufficient definition, but we'll consider love this way today, that love is the enduring commitment to seek the greatest good of another person. Uh, that doesn't cover all the ins and outs of uh, this topic of love, but the commitment to seek the greatest good of another person is, is um, certainly a good working definition to to take more of a hold on what Jesus meant by love and loving one another. 
In uh, the words of John 13 and 15, we come to the night before Jesus' death on the cross. Jesus is just hours away from his betrayal, from abuse at the hands of soldiers and trials and death on a cross. And wouldn't it stand to reason that in those final opportunities, in those waning moments of his time to prepare his disciples for their mission, that Jesus would emphasize some of those things that are top priority in his kingdom, those things that are most important to impress upon his friends before he departs his earthly ministry. And we see that there are, in fact, two different times in those waning hours in in the upper room in chapter 13. And then a little bit later, as they've departed that room in chapter 15, Jesus emphasizes that the most distinguishing mark of his followers is to be this issue of loving each other the way he has loved us. That, he says, is going to mark that we genuinely belong to Him. That is going to have an impact on the world because He says all people will know that we're His disciples if we love each other in the way in which we are called. And so we must live out this observable, life-changing love as we represent our Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to highlight four lessons of love that we find here in these verses. And the first is we must love in obedience, not in feelings. Now, when we think about love, there are a lot of feelings wrapped up in that in in the way we typically define love. But Jesus says, a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must, must love one another. It's important, I believe, that uh, we understand Jesus wasn't commanding us to have a warm feeling toward one another, a warm feeling toward everybody. Certainly there can be a lot of feelings in love, but the reality is you can't command someone to have a particular feeling. Feelings are what they are. They go up and down. They are ever-changing Have you ever been in one of those situations where a parent has told you or you've heard a parent telling someone, I want you to tell your brother you're sorry and I want to say it like you, I want you to say it like you mean it. And then you get one of those uh, apologies, I'm sorry. And you know, it's obvious that there isn't a lot of feeling, a lot of meaning in commanding an apology like that. And yet what we see here in our text is that love is commanded. So it must mean something more than just a feeling. And I believe what Jesus is telling us here is that for us, love is a choice. Regardless of how we're feeling, regardless of what the mood of the day is, love is commanded. We're to make the choice, despite how we feel in the moment, to seek the greatest good of another person because our Lord commanded it. He commands in Matthew 22, love your neighbor as yourself. He commands in Luke chapter 6, do to others as you would have them do to you. And we're well familiar that the Apostle Paul devoted an entire chapter to this subject of Christian love, telling the church to behave a certain way, we might say. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. And we see flowing from those verses that the inspired apostle wrote that love is a lifestyle. It's a series of choices that I'm going to choose to do the right thing regardless of how I feel because of my Lord's call on my life. 
Paul also phrased it this way in Romans 13, love does no harm to its neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. So I would have a start by understanding that we're not talking about how we feel, but we're talking about what we choose to do because we serve a living Savior. The second uh, love lesson I would take from these verses is we must love in Christ's strength, not our own. It can be a difficult thing to seek the greatest good of another person when in that moment, in that occasion, I really don't feel like seeking that person's greatest good. There was a story about two little girls who were trying to ride together on uh, one of those coin-operated horses at the grocery store. And uh, there was a struggle on top of the horse there. And one of the girls looked over her shoulder at the other and said, if one of us would get off here, there would be a lot more room for me. And that's reflective of, of human nature, isn't it? That... There are struggles in relationships. That, that's what comes naturally, this emphasis on me and my comfort and what I want and having my way. That's what comes most naturally for us. And I think a key to understand here in our call to love like Jesus is to note that we can't muster up Christ's variety of sacrificial love in our own strength, out of our own selves, to love like Jesus is impossible without the transforming power of his word and the work of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what uh, John also says, but in 1 John chapter 4, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. The kind of love we're talking about flows from the Heavenly Father. We're not going to be able to churn it up out of our own selves. 1 John 4.19, we love because He first loved us. The key is to be filled up from the well of the love of God is the equipping power to be able to love the way our Lord Jesus is calling us to love. Way back in uh, the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, the prophet announced these words for God, God saying to his people, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. The the key to being able to love the way Jesus is calling us to love is to be made new within. If we're focusing on filling ourselves up with the love of Jesus Christ, we will be better equipped to love in our marriages, better equipped to love in our families, to be able to love in all of our relationships according to the call on our lives. We can see that it flows from filling ourselves up with the love of Christ in Galatians 5.22 where it tells us, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, All of those things increase in us as we allow ourselves to be filled up with the Holy Spirit of God. See, that is the the source to love the way Jesus loves. It's the outcome of a change in our hearts. You will, I will be a better spouse, a better parent, a better friend when we have filled up on the love that our God has for us. You, you see, it's, it's more difficult to love people. It's nearly impossible to love people the right way if we are not aware of how much God loves us, if we are not filled up with the love he has for us, if we are not confident 
that we are loved and valued by our Father in heaven. The more that we are confident and assured in that, the freer we will be to love human beings the way Jesus loves us. The third love lesson that I'll bring up in these verses is that we must love for Jesus and not for ourselves. This whole business of of loving is about honoring our Savior. It's bigger than ourselves. There are certainly benefits to loving each other. Um, We must not mistake that issue that that we benefit, we're blessed from uh, that loving, but it needs to be about something bigger than just self. In 1 Corinthians, Paul uh, says to us, whatever you do, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Even loving in our earthly relationships is to be done to the glory of our God. Jesus said in our text, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We're trying to honor him in the way we relate to uh, other human beings. Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 16, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. This whole business of loving involves the responsibility to deny self. Now, I'm not by any means proud of of this, but sometimes something happens in me when I'm driving my car that's not the best example of uh, honoring Christ or... uh, Loving the way he calls us to love. But sometimes when uh, someone cuts me off or they run a light or they fail to yield when they're supposed to, to yield, I, I have this, this move that, that comes to me, this gesture that I can't help but make at, at the other driver. Now, thankfully, it's not the gesture you might be thinking of. I don't do that. But uh, it, it's, it's something like this. And, and it's, it's what I call the, the international symbol or, or gesture of what's your problem? You were wrong. You, you didn't give me my, my right here according to the rules of the road. Now, now why do I do that? It, it's a pride issue, isn't it? it? It's really a pride issue that I want the other driver to know they were in the wrong and I was in the right. I want to vindicate myself inside of that other, uh, that other motorist. And really that's so much at the heart of what our human nature is like. The truth is we don't wake up in the morning thinking, oh boy, I get to go out there and love difficult people today. Rather, we wake up thinking, I, I hope nobody ruffles my feathers today. I hope nobody gets in my way today. And in the midst of that, we need to say, Lord, show me how I can love those people who rub me the wrong way, those people who get on my last nerve, those people who are apparently living far from Christ and are hard to love. But in this, the core issue is we've got to die to ourselves and begin more and more to live for Christ. Paul wrote, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself, who loved me and gave himself for me. So often the issues in our relationships with other people revolve around this this issue that we haven't yet died to ourselves and things are still very much about us and what we want. How are you doing at the issue of dying to self? That brings me to uh, the fourth lesson we'll draw about love from this text and that is we must Love like Jesus, not our natural selves. Love like Jesus. Deb Lawrence uh, shared 
in a Christian magazine article years ago, uh, what, what I feel like is a, a really good reflection of human nature when she shared the property laws of a toddler. And I think th this is so on in terms of reflecting the nature that we have when we're not allowing Christ to transform us. The property laws of a toddler start like this. If I like it, it's mine. If it's in my hand, it's mine. If I can take it from you, it's mine. If I had it a little while ago, it's mine. If it's mine, it must never appear to be yours in any way. If I am doing or building something, all the pieces are mine. If it looks just like mine, it's mine. If I saw it first, it's mine. If you are playing with something and you put it down, it automatically becomes mine. And then the last one, if it's broken, it's yours. <laughs> now, now, isn't that so much of what human nature is like? It, it's mine, it's, it's mine, it's mine. That's our natural inclination. Jesus is calling us in our relationships to something different than that. Twelve years ago, uh, this past spring, I was blessed to, to be asked to, to speak at my daughter's wedding. Um, now, that may not seem that, that much of an ordinary thought to you, but not a lot of young couples want to have a sermon at, at their wedding, um, and she wanted to have a, a sermon by dad at her wedding. And uh, so I, I wrestled with that issue. What do I want to say to my young daughter and her fiance on this uh, big day in their lives? And uh, I came up with the decision to, to speak on those verses that Nancy referred to earlier from Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, and husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And as I wrestled with that issue of what do I really want to say to my daughter and, and her husband on, on their first day of marriage, and I, I summed up the, the message in this way to them, we are called to be Jesus in our marriages. You see, as Paul writes those instructions to, to husbands and wives, the emphasis is always on the Lord. Love your wives as, as Christ loved the church. Submit to your husbands as to the Lord. The, the emphasis is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We're called to be Jesus in the way we love our spouses, in the way we love our children, in the way we're friends to our friends, in the way we relate to our co-workers, called to be Jesus, called to honor Jesus, called to, called to reflect Jesus. That's what we hear here in these verses as I have loved you, so you must love one another. In other words, in the manner in which I have demonstrated love, that's how we're to, to love other people. It's, it's what John also echoed years later when he wrote his epistles. 1 John 3, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. It, it can be hard for us to explain love, define love, write out a, um, a paragraph about love, but this makes it clear. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. It's what he did that really shows us what love is all about. And John goes on to write, we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, he writes, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Love the way Jesus loves. That's the call on our lives. So here, here for us is where the rubber meets the road. How are we going to love our family members on those days when things are just honestly difficult? 
How are we going to love that, that coworker that gets on our nerves, our last nerve? How, how are we going to love the, the mouthy teenager, the grouchy supervisor? How are we going to love the, the neighbor that just can't seem to stay out of our business? How are we going to love the brother or sister in Christ that's critical or the in-law that seems to always be meddling or that person who offended us long ago. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And so I ask us today, what is, what is the church going to be known for? What's, what's going to stand out most about the gathering of of faith of, of which we are a part? Will it be, you know, a good youth program? Will it be a nice building? Will it be for supporting and helping missionaries? Will it be for serving the community in a number of ways? None of those, while they can be good, are the priority because Jesus calls us for us first to be known by our love by our love. The first priority, the night he was betrayed, the night he would suffer abuse, the night before he would die on the cross, love each other as I have loved you. How are you doing today when it comes to that kind of love? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're reminded Wow, we still need to grow. We still have those struggles, those hang-ups, those difficulties. Remind us today of the love of Jesus, the love that led him all the way to the cross where he died in our place. Father, fill us up with the love of Jesus that we would be reminded of how much you love us because only in that will we really be free to love others the way you call us to love. Lead us, God, in these moments to deny ourselves and to say yes to, to loving like you have loved. Help us to renew our commitment just now to the truth that, Father, that's the call in our lives. Love like Jesus. Father, if there's someone here today who needs to come and accept your love for the first time, to accept Jesus for the first time, we pray that you will inspire that person to come to you even now as we prepare to sing. Father, again, we just pray, help us to love like Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. Let's stand and sing our song of decision. And if uh, you feel a need to come and respond to the scripture today, we invite you to come. I'll be here near the front. I'm confident one of the elders would be happy to come and speak with you as well. Let's, let's sing together.
I just wanted to give a couple of examples about the way God works, and uh, that was a good message. That's the reason I'm up here. Uh, I grew up around a lot of, when I was young, older people, and I wanted to tell all of you I appreciate you, and the ones that's gone, I mean, that's where we learn, and uh, that's God's blessed me with that. And I want to give a couple of examples. David Jackson, you hear me? When I was a young kid, I thought I had a tractor big enough to plow snow. And uh, I was in the ditch more than I was on the road plowing snow. And David, I don't know how many times he pulled me out and never wanted nothing. You know, just that's a person that you just remember and you really respect and and uh, you look up to the uh, rest of your life that they just come and help you out and just don't think anything about it. So thanks, David. Good to see you this morning. And Donnie Merritt, when I was a youngster, I went to the uh, state fair and helped him in the milk barn. Didn't know who he was. Never asked him where he lived or anything, but I knew he was Christian too. And uh, uh, here's the way God works. He's one of them that come over whenever I wasn't going to church and uh, visited me. And I said, I know you. And I had no idea he lived out here because, you know, I was going to, I never come to church here at this church. And uh, so thanks, Donnie. That's the way God works. And being my wife, if he wouldn't give me the wife I got now, I probably wouldn't be here either. And the rest of you, you know. And uh, one thing I had to find out, like when Trump got shot in the ear, that was, it was good to see that people on up and higher started talking about God. I mean, you know, what I'm saying is that's what we need everywhere. I'm not getting into politics. I'm saying this country needs to be God. God is the one that takes care of us. He's the one that, even though I forget, you get frustrated. God's always in charge. It showed us all. God's in charge, you see, you know. And we get frustrated. So I just wanted to thank, I just want younger people to know Older people know what they're doing, and uh, there's there's a guy sitting there, that was a Sunday school teacher, Mr. Dickerson. He, he has, for how many years was he a Sunday school teacher? A long time, you know. Just to, just to all of you, you know. It's just, uh, and one thing I had to learn is. I create my own problems. I'm no better than anybody else. None of us is. And then when you got a problem, the only way you can, when you sin, is admit it. Go to somebody, try to get some help. Or, you know, don't, and when I leave out God, when I'm outside every day, if I don't, if I leave him out, things don't go as good. And then I say, God, you, I need help. I mean, people think I'm crazy, but it works when you ask him, when you keep him with you. So, okay, well, thanks. Just wanted to say, say that. I'm not getting bigger. Thanks, Myron. Nope. <laughs> Let's close uh, with our prayer here this morning. <clears throat> Our Father, I, my prayer this morning is exactly that of Jim's, and that is uh, help us to love like Jesus. Lord, I, I'm so thankful that we have the scriptures uh, of his words and of his commands, and, uh, but Lord, I'm so thankful that we have the scripture of just how he lived and how he demonstrated that. And Lord, my mind just goes to John chapter 13, in that, um, in that last week of his life that he showed the full extent of his love to disciples by by washing their feet. And, and Lord, I pray, Lord, that we will, will follow 
Jesus' example, Lord, and that we, we will be humble and that we will be willing to serve each other um, in love and not be thinking of ourselves or, or other things. Uh, just be focused on that person and that soul. So, Lord, we thank you so much for your example and for your. we thank you for those here today who have demonstrated a, a life of love and commitment and just for the testimony and for the encouragement it is to so many others. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. blessed week.